Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we're going from comic books to animated film, following the adventures of Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne in the new animated film, Batman and Superman Battle of the Super Sons, which you can pick up now on digital or on Ultra HD 4K or Blu ray, whatever you know option you want. It's out there. And uh, this is actually a free copy that was sent to me by Warner Brothers to review for you all and give you my honest opinion on it. So, as always, if something give, is given to me, I like to pay it forward. So, Boom, there you go. First person to put that code in, you get a digital copy of Battle of the Super Sons. And I definitely encourage, before we even get into this, because I'm going to try to keep it spoiler free for the most part, but there's some mild spoilers I might get into. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to stay away from spoilers. So please, though, still go see this movie and check it out for yourself. It's got some of the best Superman stuff I've seen in a while, especially in animation. Although I've liked a lot of the stuff that I've seen in animation with Superman. This one was really great. I, I actually... And then we'll get into it because we're going to compare the comic books and the animated movie a little bit. But this is something I really love that they added to Superman that I didn't think I would like. And I ended up really liking a lot. Uh, and that is something that, in my opinion, DC has always done way better than Marvel Comics. Um, yes, there have been mantles in Marvel that have been passed down to, to new generations. But for the most part, they always come back to their, your, you know, their core person who held the mantle, for the most part. I mean, with a few exceptions. And DC does too, but one thing I like about DC is even if they don't officially pass a mantle down, they still elevate the character to another level, uh, these legacy characters, like a sidekick or something like that. So everyone from Roy Harper to Dick Grayson or Barbara Gordon, they all evolve into something bigger than what they even thought they probably could be at one point. And honestly, I would argue that Dick Grayson is probably the best when he's Nightwing, although he made, I thought, a really good Batman, and he was the Batman when Damian Wayne was first introduced in the comics. So we'll start there with comic books. Uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of Damian Wayne and Jonathan Kent. And again, these were two editions that at first I was like, man, is this really something? And this is also two editions that a lot of executives at companies, they don't like when you add. They don't like when you add uh, kids, you know, Superman having kids or Batman having kids because then it ages the character to them too much to where they feel like the character's unrelatable. And I'm like, dude, most people who read comics have kids, you know, and most people on the planet have kids. So how is that unrelatable? It's it's so, and, and even if you don't have kids, you grew up with parents. So you know what it's like maybe from the kid's point of view. So to me, it's so silly to get into those d debates and arguments, uh, the, but sometimes exec executives do. They think uh, that this is hindering creativity. And to me, I think the addition of Damian Wayne and Jonathan has only added to Superman and Batman stories and made them better over the years, in my personal opinion. Um, obviously, Damian Wayne first started in Grant Morrison's run, um, and he was so awesome. When he first showed up, he had a sword right to Batman's throat, and it turns out he is the child of Batman and Talia al Ghul, who is Ra's al Ghul's daughter, which makes him Ra's al Ghul's grandson. And so he trained under Ra's al Ghul and Talia and uh, under the League of Shadows and, and everything, and, uh, and then eventually got put into Batman's care. And then Batman soon after died in the comic books, and Dick Grayson stepped up and became the new Batman, and train Damien. And if you talk to Grant Morrison about that, he says, you know, the only person in the DC universe that could have properly trained and kind of tamed Damien is Dick Grayson. And that's what happens. He has no respect for Dick Grayson at first, Damien, but then he grows to respect him and then looks up to him as, as a mentor. Um, and then now Damien, I would say, is more heroic in the comics, probably because of the influence of Dick Grayson, more so than even his own father at points. So, uh, and then later on in Superman, Lois and Clark, it was like a mini series they did with Dan Jurgens. They brought in a family. It was Superman from another universe with, uh, you know, Lois as his wife and their son, Jonathan. And eventually that got folded in during DC Rebirth into the actual continuity of the character, which I thought was really awesome. I thought they did a great job bringing Jonathan in. I love that mini series, but then I also love everything that Dan Jurgens and Pete Tomasi did afterwards especially the pete tomasi run which i have all in hardcover just like i have all the grant morris and stuff in hardcover and uh, in the omnibus forms and stuff and in the deluxe edition hardcovers but then also the super sons that pete tomasi did where this movie essentially comes from where it's about damien and jonathan teaming up and becoming essentially the new world's finest although they don't like that term they want to be called the super sons so this movie now that we're getting into this uh, i think is a great adaptation of the spirit of the introduction of Damien, because when you first meet him in this movie, 
He is a total jerk and he even tries to kill Jonathan Kent. And that's very much like Damian Wayne. Um, and then you also Jonathan, like his introduction in this, he has no idea his father has powers. He himself doesn't have any powers when the story starts. And as he's, you know, developing and learning more and, and hoping his dad was around more, you start to peel back the layers. Oh my God, my dad is Superman. Oh my God, I have powers too. What's happening to me? Um, and then he becomes a total fanboy and is like, wait, I get to meet Batman and I get to meet the Justice League. And uh, there's other Justice League cameos in here too. Um, there's, you know, you got Green Arrow and Martian Manhunter and some of the, even the Teen Titans. Uh, all that stuff played out really well. I didn't see enough Teen Titans for me, for my taste. I think they showed Aqualad on like one of the monitors, but he had like a blip of a scene in one of the fights. And I'm like, oh man, I would have loved to see more Aqualad. Uh, but other than that though, really well done, very well paced story. It starts off with the origin of Superman. And I know a lot of people will be like, dude, really? We're gonna see this again? but they added something a little different to it. And what I liked is they tied it back. Jeremy Adams, who wrote this, who he's been hit or miss on some of the animated stuff, for, in my opinion, but the stuff when he hits it, I love it. Like, I love the decisions he makes. Uh, the new Mortal Kombat movie he just did uh, that he wrote, I liked a lot. And then Matt Peters, who directed this, also great job. They take the scene where Superman's parents put him in the pod and send him off Krypton just as it's exploding. They added something to it, something that ends up being the villain of the story. And which was really cool because that was actually an idea I had once for a live action Superman movie. But I'm going to say a different villain because I don't want to spoil the villain in this one. Uh, but in mine, it was like Brainiac was the computer that was navigating the ship that brought Superman to Earth. And then over the course of Superman growing on Earth and becoming his own person, the ship Brainiac's, you know, creating himself inside of it, being, you know, dormant and just kind of left in a, a barn. And then he becomes Brainiac and starts hacking into things and, and you know, turning into like a robot Brainiac kind of like you get in the uh, comic books and also in the animated series. But in this one, you have a different villain. It's not Brainiac, uh, but the, it is pretty cool that uh, the way they do this villain and the way it pays off in the end. But then also, like I said, this scene where Superman gets sent off planet, you're like, why are they doing this again? It gets mirrored later on when there's someone or some, some people, I should say, getting sent to safety um, uh, by, you know, by Jonathan and Damien. And it's so cool. I'm like, wow, that mirrors the beginning it's like it's 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 the sacrifice the heroic sacrifice and uh i thought it was really really well done and it made me like this movie even more uh, i gotta say the action was really great in it the voice acting was really good uh jack dylan grazer who did the he played freddy in uh in the shazam live action movie he does the voice of jonathan kent in this did a really great job um i love that they made jonathan pl uh, kent play baseball and that they called him jonathan Kent because he can't hit a ball uh so that's what his bullies called him so there was a lot of fun there, but there was a lot of development there because that, even a little baseball thing, comes back at the end of the story <laughs> uh, in, a, in a very cool way with superpowers and stuff. So everything kind of was set up and paid off really well. And I, I thought that was very clever and what you kind of want to do in, in a good screenplay. Um, and then Jack Grifo, who plays the voice of Damian Wayne, he did an awesome job. And you get really cool cameos in this, like I said, from Just League members, but you also get some super pets um, like Bat Cow, which came in during the uh, the Grant Morrison run also. So I love that there was a scene for that. And it was a really funny scene about milking it, uh, which you, it's funny, uh, definitely a good, good scene. Um, Laura Bailey as Lois Lane did a great job. And I love that even though she got taken out in a way, not she's not dead or anything like that, but she's, her character kind of gets sidelined in a way and gets used once and then gets put away. She comes back in a major way, uh, Lois does, talking with Lex Luthor, who is the President of the United States. So what I liked about this is this smacks you right into the middle of the DC Universe. Like, I don't think there's any animated things that are a precursor to this, and it's just, hey, here's our story, here's the world, you either you get it or you don't get it. And I kind of like writing like that sometimes, where it's just like, hey man, you're either going to follow this or you're not going to follow it, but either way... We're going to try to make it as entertaining as possible. And I think Matt Peters and Jeremy Adams did just that. And so did the voice acting cast. Uh, Troy Baker does Batman. Um, and then you also have Tom Kenny, who does the voice of Green Arrow, but he got to play Penguin again, which is really cool because he was Penguin in The Batman, the cartoon, which I really, really love. Um, and Nolan North did a great job as jor at the beginning. Um, then you have Zeno Robinson as Jimmy Olsen and also Melvin Masters, uh, you know, shows up at a scene. Wonder Girl and Laura, played by Mirna Velasco. And uh, Travis Willingham, who does Superman and Clark Kent. And I got to really give a shout out to him because his voice is so booming when he's Superman. He sounds like he's speaking right from his chest. Uh, but then if you watch, you know, when he's when he's Clark Kent, he's very like calm and tender and like, you know, talking to his family, trying to understand them. Patience in his voice. I really like that. But when he's facing an enemy as Superman, 
his voice changes. It, it becomes more intense, but not like in a threatening way, but just you hear him. He, has, he, he makes a presence. Superman, when he shows up and speaks, you don't look away, you know? And I was like, that's really cool. I like that a lot. So, um, so yeah, the voice acting, the writing, the directing, I thought made for a really good movie. But I don't want to spoil anything. Like I said, I don't want to get into any of the details. I'll just leave it at that. Overall, I give this a four out of five. I thought this was a really solid movie. A few little moments where I would criticize, but like I said, I would get into spoilers a little bit. So I'm not going to do that for you. Uh, go check it out. You can buy it on digital today, Ultra HD 4K or Blu-ray, whatever you desire. Go pick it up. And if you're a fan of the DC Animated stuff, you got to add this to your collection. It's really, really solid, and it's worth your time for sure. Uh, thank you so much for watching the show. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've seen this movie, if you're thinking about seeing it, whatever it is, go see it, first of all. Like I'm telling you right now, I highly recommend it. See it for yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. So there may be spoilers down there, so avoid you know the comments if you don't want spoilers. And come back after you see the movie and join the conversation with us. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.